Okay, our first example is that we've got a river that is 120 meters wide. We've got a boat and we're gonna point the boat straight across the river. It can go 3.5 meters per second and the current of the river is 1.2 meters per second. Okay, and um, the good news is, is that we can solve this with one of these. And the really good news is that it's really short one of these because we've got across the river and downstream and then it's just V and S and T. And the only formula we ever use is just V is S over T. It's not even in the data packet, but, but uh, velocity is displacement over time, yeah? Okay. And then notice that I'm making downstream, I'm making down the page positive. Why am I doing that? Is it because every God-fearing, America-loving river flows south and that ones that flow north are communist and wrong? <laughs> well, Emmett is communist and wrong. It's one of the better communist and wrong ones, you know. The Mississippi, the, Missis the Nile is wrong. Mississippi, good. See, I'm from the Midwest, and so in the, in the Midwest, it's very simple. Rivers flow south, unless you're in, well, Canada, for example. Okay, there, there's actually large parts of Canada where it starts flowing toward Hudson Bay. That's north, right? So, so this is the saddest story of all. I used to be a canoe guide, like I took kids on canoe trips, and we planned this beautiful trip, and we were going to go down the Namakon River. Yeah? We had 20 miles on the Namakon River. Sounds like a work song, right? 20 miles on the Namakon River, right? Anyway, no. So we get to the Namakon River, and instead of flowing south, like all freedom-loving rivers flow, the Namakon River was flowing north. Why is that so sad? Because that means that everyone had to paddle. Up. We had to paddle upstream. So instead of going down through these nice rapids that we saw on the map, we were going up through rapids. Do you know that a canoe can go up class one and class two rapids? Yes, I actually did. Class one is just like fast moving water. Class two is like, you know, some standing waves and stuff. You can go over standing waves. You can paddle upstream up over standing waves. Why do you do that? Why don't you just get out of the canoe and walk along the shore? Because the shore is full of trees and cliffs and there's no path, because who would go south on the Namakon River, except for me, right? <laughs> so anyway, so it was sort of funny. We'd be paddling along the river and you know, just it's the, you know, it's the velocity of the, of the canoe minus the velocity of the current. Most of the time the current's not all that fast. Canoes go really fast. Right, every now and then we'd be paddling and suddenly we'd stop moving. We'd be paddling, it's like you know, normal pace and we'd just stop moving up the river because the river would have like a little pinch point where the current picked up and we'd just, boom, we'd just sit there, right? And then we'd have to poo, 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 get through that little spot. That was sort of sad, wasn't that sad? <laughs> a little bit sad, okay. We actually, on some of the rapids, we, there were portage trails and so we, we carried all our stuff to the upstream side and then we went downstream and played on them and stuff like that. So I wasn't hated entirely by my group, okay? Okay, so for this one, this is the simplest one of all. Uh, where does the 120 meters go? Is that here? Yeah, there we go. 120 meters across. Where does the 3.5 go? Is that across? Yeah, there we go. Where does the 1.2 go? That's downstream, right? So if you had if you head straight across, the, the speed of the boat is entirely straight across. The velocity, the downstream, the current is the downstream velocity and it's totally downstream, right? And now this is really easy. We don't need three things, we just need two. So uh, time is gonna be displacement divided by velocity because of math, right? So 120 divided by 3.5, 34. 34.2. Two, I'll say two nine or something like that, right? Carry a couple extra sig figs. Right, and then we can castle that across. Uh, displacement is gonna be velocity times time, yeah? So that times 1.2 is 41.14. And then the questions that it says up there, uh, what is the time to cross? Well, this is the shortest time it would take to cross. 
If you want to cross, just head straight across, right? 34.29 seconds or 34 seconds with two sig figs. Uh, where does it land? Well, the liability is that if you, head, if you point straight across, you're not going to go straight across. You're going to go 41 meters downstream, right? And we will answer the question, how do you go straight across, right? Um, what is the velocity as seen from above? What if you were on a helicopter hovering above the river? Ow! <laughs> what would you see? You'd see them, you'd see them going like this, right? And then like this, yeah? This would be 3.5, this would be 1.2. What's the hypotenuse? What is it? Even? Exactly. It comes out even? I picked a 3, 4, 5 right triangle, I think. Yeah, 3.7 meters per second, so that's the square root of 3.5 squared. How is that possible? How is that possible? That's how it's possible. Magic. It's a 3, 4, 5 right triangle, I believe. It's just hidden. Okay, so that's that. And then this angle here, we could find it. That's tan minus 1 of 1.2 divided by 3.5. So we just love that inverse tan. Eighteen point nine degrees. Sokoto, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so are we all are we good on example one? Yeah. Are you ready for example two? Example two is the hardest one. Ever? Yes, ever. Okay, example two, pointed at an arbitrary angle, arbitrary angle, arbitrary angle. Okay, so here we've got this, the river is still 120 meters wide. For some reason, we just take a compass bearing 32 degrees north of west or something like that, right? So we point the boat. This is 32 degrees. So notice that the hypotenuse is still 3.5. The direction we're pointed, wherever the boat is pointed, that's 3.5, the speed of the boat, right? It's 32 degrees. The current is still downstream 1.2 meters per second, okay? And what do we do? We've got an angle magnitude vector. What do we always have to do with those? Always have to make them into components. I don't know what to do with the components, but I know that I have to make them into components or my teacher will make fun of me, okay? so. So 3.5 sine 32 is the, is the upstream component. Okay, so that's 1.855 meters per second. I'm carrying four sig figs because I have two. And then the, the across component is 3.5 cos 32. So 3.5 cos 32. That's 2.968. Okay. And now we're still going to do this. We're still going to do a, a cross and downstream. And let's just throw the bits and pieces together. Does it all go? Yes, sir. Well, no, no, no. You're, you're like way ahead of us. You're like, I'm like here, and you're like way over there. Who's got, where does, where does this stuff go? Yeah, 1.2 definitely goes there, right? So the current is going downstream, and that's a velocity. No. Yeah, 2.968. So this, this across thing is the only thing in town as far as across goes. What else do we know? Wait. Displacement across is 120, right? Whoops, 120. I'll put it in the wrong place. Yeah, 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 yeah. question. Yeah, what do we do with this guy? What is there, where does the 1.855 go? 
Yeah, you would, right? So this guy, 